Salinas, California. So we have a team that's based in Northern California. We do a lot of work in the area, providing application services to growers via drone. Especially in the Salinas Valley, uh, the specialty crops that they tend to grow here are vegetables. As they grow, it becomes harder and harder to treat those acres in any way other than via air. The amount of crop dusters in California has reduced by about 90% in the last 10 years. So being able to have another way to aerially treat the acres is vital, especially for these regions. So the series air demo today was multifaceted for us. We are a service provider first and foremost. So having a drone that allows us higher outputs and higher payloads uh, is going to improve our efficiency in the field. But we are also a research entity with series doing testing on the equipment. And then we're also seeing, you know, the ability of series not only being open source where we can start integrating other technologies, but also working with them to refine the technologies. So as we apply, we're getting improved efficacy um, which is what everything is about here with specialty crops in California. Agricultural spray drones in general uh, have traditionally come almost exclusively from China and the technology has increased very rapidly. So as like a, a large application services business, it's difficult to A, find a technology that's well suited to our specific application environment and then B, uh, stay ahead of the developments of the technology as it progresses very rapidly. Consequentially, uh, Series Air has come at a very opportune moment for us where we have been looking and even investing in some cases in high payload spray drones that suit the needs of the Salinas Valley where application rates are typically a lot higher than you would see in specialty crop environments. And so having something like this large payload that can spray out with a nice quality uh, and really get deep down into the canopy of these vegetable crops is something that we desperately needed. You know, a lot goes into building these aircrafts. They're, they're very difficult, but we aren't starting at ground zero. We have a, you know, a few decades of experience of using drones and watching them develop. And so, you know, one of the things I really appreciate about the Series Air platform seems to be that they're not trying to reinvent the wheel. They're taking all of the good from their predecessors and then just scaling it to an environment that it's well suited for and listening to customers like myself and, you know, taking our needs to heart. But really, I was just focused on whether the thing flies and sprays well and, you know, turns in a smooth way and looks like an aircraft that is commercially ready and that can take the, the beating that agriculture is going to put it through. Uh, so what the Series Air would do would be to double the capacity of the current solutions at 1.5 times the price. As someone that's in charge of the operations of a business, if I can consolidate my infrastructure, that always is preferable than having multiple points of failure. We have the near-term vision and the long-term vision. Keeping people safer is the step one and, and replacing helicopters and air tractors is step two because of constrained labor force and the increase in liability of having a manned aircraft. Long-term, what we hope to do is to maximize on the virtue of the drone as it relates to application quality, accessibility, and costs so that we start to take a bite out of the ground-based application market. Outside of that, what I'm hoping to do is to minimize the amount of time that we spend on the field and the amount of time that we spend moving from point A to point B. And so having a larger platform that reduces the amount of flights that you do as you get through a field, you know, appeals to us very much. The system is really easy for just mapping a field. You have several modes that you're able to do. This particular demonstration that we did here, I just simply did a map on the Google image that you have and you touch the screen and, and it's as simple as that. We did 10 gallons an acre demonstrations. We did different swath sizes right now, different droplet sizes and different speeds. Do I see this as being a viable solution for what we have against us right now? Absolutely. You know, we need something that is going to put out the volume. California regulations require us to have a minimum of 10 gallons an acre on most labels. Uh, we need the coverage and being that these are higher value crops, uh, growers are, are really concerned with if it's going to do the job well. I was impressed by how fast it flies and its stability. It's a lot more mature in its development than other drones that we've seen that have tried to bite off the same challenge. We're very optimistic about something like this. It seems to have a lot of the, the virtues that we were hoping to maximize on, which is you know being able to 
do everything that we wanted to do, but bigger and faster. I see a lot of excitement in the communities here in California because this is what we've been waiting for. You know, we started back in 2019 when the biggest spray drone was two and a half gallons. So trying to gain traction in a market with that equipment was exceedingly difficult. We had to have a lot of tenacity, a lot of dedication to the, to the uh, industry as a whole in order to make sure that we could forward it. Being able to take a drone like this with the output and the capacity that it has is a game changer for us.